Hello YouTubers and welcome to Novus Talks with me your host Novus Corbius. And in this video I'm once again going to talk about Metroid. I want to talk about something specific actually. Uh, something just came into my mind last night when I was going to bed actually and I was like you know what this would be a, a fun thing to discuss relating to Metroid Prime 4 and the story of the game. Um, mainly because I don't think I've ever really talked about the story of Prime 4. I did a theory a couple of weeks ago, probably about a month now, um, that I was really proud of that tied into Metroid Prime Hunters and the origin of Phazon and things like this. Um, and before that I talked about Kraid and Ridley being in Prime 4, but I don't think I ever really talked about ideas of what the story would be other than those two videos maybe. Um, so that's what this is going to be about. I wanted to talk about the story of Prime 4. Obviously the main reason we haven't talked about the story of Prime 4 is because we know absolutely nothing. We've nothing to go on. It's all speculation except for the ending of Prime Federation Force and I guess Corruption's ending as well, but more so Federation Force. The one thing we know about Metroid Prime 4, and this is going to be the main part that makes up the bulk of this video, is that Silox will be either the main villain or at least a major villain. Kensuke Tanabe has been saying ever since Metro Prime 3 came out that he wanted to do a game that focused on the relationship between Silox and Samus. And Federation Force came out and Silox was in it and now we have to wait till Prime 4 to come out. So we can presume Silox would be in it. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised in some way if he isn't. So it would be kind of a Nintendo move to suddenly not have him in the game, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Uh, so we can speculate that Prime 4 is finally going to answer some questions for us. Who is Silox? Uh, what is his identity? Or could be a her. They could pull um, and yes Metroid move on us again and reveal Silox be a woman um, what is Silox's motives are we gonna see him without the helmet uh, that's a big thing and one of the things I was really curious about when I was going to sleep last night is Silox going to talk because that that is something that has a lot of implications either way if he talks well, number one, he'll be the first villain in the Prime series to talk, I believe. Yep, he'll be the first to talk. Um, and that will allow for more interaction. You know, we'll get to see from his words. And I presume he'll be voice acting as well, hopefully. Uh, we'll, hear, we'll hear Silox speak and we'll get to see, you know, just exactly what his intentions and his motives are. Uh, we're going to get a look into his mind and see how he's thinking and how he's viewing Samus and the Federation and um, things like this. Uh, but that's if he does talk. The other flip side to that is that he doesn't talk and I kind of feel like this is the more likely scenario. I want him to talk and for the sake of a relationship building game it would make sense for him to talk but if Nintendo want to keep him as this mysterious and dangerous foe for most of the game, chances are he probably won't talk, or at least not till like the very final battle maybe. Um, also, if he doesn't talk, how are they going to exactly build on the relationship? Is it going to be scan data? Like, all I can think of is maybe you go on Silex's ship and you're scanning around and you're reading like different logbook entries he's written up and that explains things that's quite possible and that would tie into the um sort of the overall world building of metroid in terms of scanning things and getting story elements that way um rather than having silox talk um maybe they do an element of both i don't know but i feel like that's the more likely option even though i really want him to talk i won't be upset if he doesn't talk but it will just have it depends on what they're trying to go what they're trying to do with him for example and it's interesting that Kensuke Tanabe says the relationship between Samus and Silox because 
they don't really know each other, or at least Samus doesn't know Psylocke. They met once face to face, but at that time they were both bounty hunters trying to find out about the secrets of the Olympics. So they didn't really know each other. At that point it was just a fight for who could get to the power first. So there wasn't really anything connection there. It was just like all the other hunters in the game, they were just like there. They were cool and all, don't get me wrong, I'm not like shitting on them. Um, I'm just saying it wasn't interaction, it was just fighting to see who could emerge on top. So the fact that he says there's a, he, that he's implying there's some sort of history between them is really interesting to me. And that could imply any number of things. You know, it's it's the most likely scenario is that Silox is maybe he was just some person that got tested on by the Federation. I know this is an old theory. He got tested on by the Federation and he went rogue. He blamed Samus because Samus is technically the origin of everything that has happened to him because the Federation, you know, got his suit from trying to replicate hers. So maybe that's why he views her as his enemy. But it is interesting that despite the fact that they haven't interacted much, he has stalked her. We saw him following her at the end of Metroid Prime 3. So Psylocke has a vendetta against her for one reason. Or maybe not. See, the thing is, we don't even know if he's really a bad guy. We're assuming, based on the fact that he was a boss in Metro Prime Hunters, but is he bad? What, what evidence is there to say he is? Because now that I'm looking at it, okay, he's stalking Samus, but who's to say maybe he's not trying to protect her from something else, or maybe he's... Uh, trying to get her help in something or you know let's go the other way and say you know he's trying to study her so that he can find out how to ambush her and get revenge and you know that's the most likely thing but that's not the fun answer you know um, now that that point I just brought up about him stalking her and trying to warn her about something could play into Prime 4 in a way that the game probably builds up making us believe Sadox is the villain all along and then maybe halfway through the game the real villain shows up. Maybe they do something like that, I don't know. Uh, just something I'm throwing out there, some food for thought for you. Um, but then, the really interesting theory, and the one I hope is true, um, surprisingly it's not a common theory, it's something very niche, I guess. Maybe that's not the word I'm looking for, but... Going back to... I brought up this YouTuber, McIntyre, in the last video I mentioned. Or one of the last few videos, anyway. I mentioned he was one of the early Metroid YouTubers I watched. He did a video back in about 2014, I think it was, about Psylocke, which he speculated, and through some translation of the name or whatever, he speculated that Psylocke would be Samus's brother. Now, that is incredibly interesting, if that's the case. I hope it is. Because apparently there's a manga. Um, I'm not really overly familiar with the manga. Overall, I only know like the basic things about Samus's parents being killed and stuff, but apparently there's one manga where Samus has a brother. He goes missing right before everything else happens. And uh, it's never actually stated that he's dead, except that he's just missing. Um, but I have heard that that manga is not canon. I don't really know what the case is. I'd have to look into that. I probably should have done that before making this video, but oh well. Um, maybe they're trying to incorporate that. It's possible, because that would... When Kintsugi, again, go back to what he says, the relationship between Samus and Psylocke. It's implied there's history there. Maybe Silox is Samus's brother. He was left for dead. He probably, he's searching for Samus maybe either because he's not sure if she's alive or he feels that she abandoned him maybe. And that, see that makes it more interesting because if he's her brother, it adds a whole element to the Metroid lore because every single Metroid game we've played, we've played under the context that her entire family's dead, she has no living family. 
Imagine how we would all feel if Prime 4 throws a curveball at us that her brother is still alive. You know, they, they could do so many things with that. Um, again, would we see him talk? Would we see him take off the helmet? I mean, I'm kind of more interested in taking off the helmet more than talking, but... You know, I, I don't know, there, there could be any number of things. And then, going back to Federation Force, when he stole the Metroid. What does that mean? Because I just threw up the idea earlier that maybe he's not a bad guy. So if he's not a bad guy, why did he steal a Metroid? Well, we know the Federation Force are not exactly... The Galactic Federation are not exactly trustworthy people. Um, they are power hungry. They are trying to clone Metroids and take over the galaxy that way. So what if Silox was in on a conspiracy happening? What if everything we saw in Other M and Fusion was being planned well in advance and Silox knew about the very early stages of this plan? Maybe he stole the Metroid for that reason. Because think about it, this is the first time the Federation have their hands on a Metroid. They've only had their hands on a Metroid three times in the series. The first time was when they first discovered them. Immediately the Space Pirates stole the Metroid for them, so they didn't even get to study the Metroid. The next time they had their hands on a Metroid was Federation Force. And then after that it's Super Metroid. Temporarily until Ridley kills them all and takes a Metroid. So they've never kept their hands on a Metroid. This is the second time that they've gathered a Metroid and Silox takes it from them. Why? You know, people are like saying that, okay, he's trying to weaponize it, um, create an army or something, some sort of weapon that he can use to get revenge on Samus and the Federation. That is the most likely scenario, that's probably what's going to happen, but going back to my last video, uh, responding to the other end that never was, I brought up the fact that the person who uploaded that video mentioned how Metroids can transfer memories, emotions, and mindsets into people, making them more than just weapons. So with that in mind, it opens the door for what Silos could possibly do with a Metroid. Maybe he's trying to transfer energy into himself or something else, maybe some other device. He couldn't, maybe he's not necessarily trying to weaponize them, but he's trying to gain access to something with the Metroid. Um, maybe he gets corrupted by Metroid energy and becomes Dark Psylox. Um, that is another big thing that people have talked about in regards to Prime 4 is without Dark Samus, maybe we want to get a Dark Psylox. Whether Psylox himself turns into Dark Psylox or whether it's a separate entity. That's up to speculation, but that is an idea out there, and it's something that seems reasonably likely. Um, but you got to think, like, what are the things he can do with a Metroid? I mentioned in my Goria video how he could be using the Metroid to um, try and find out about like the origin of Phazon or whatever. Maybe he's trying to recreate Phazon for himself or something or as a way to fight back against the Federation, who really knows? Maybe he has his own organization. Um, and he's trying to get revenge on the Federation because he's Samus's brother. They didn't exactly help him. He was left missing in action. So there's that. And then how he got his hand in the suit. The game, Hunters mentions that he stole the suit, but people have long theorized that Maybe he's like Camden, he might have suffered the same fate, he might have been taken from his home and then experimented on and went rogue, and that is possible. Um, maybe the only thing that comes to mind is the Federation knew he was alive, they were keeping him somewhere. Maybe after Samus left the military and went to become a bounty hunter and they saw everything she was doing, they wanted that power for themselves, so they started experimenting on someone who was related to her to see if they could produce similar results in terms of power. And if it worked with him, why couldn't it work with anyone else? Um, so that's just another way of looking at it. Um, 
either way, I'm really excited for Psydox in Metroid Prime 4. I hope he's the main villain and he's not like some side character now that shows up at the end. Or worst case scenario, he shows up only at a post credit scene. I hope he actually has a role in the game and I hope it's explained and maybe he gets a talk or at least show him at the helmet, tell us his identity, where he came from and if he's actually Samus' brother. But in all due time, we'll find out. Maybe in the trailer for the game whenever it comes, who knows. Um, so yeah, I don't have anything else to add on top of that. So let me know down in the comment section below, what do you think of everything I brought up in this video? Do you agree? Do you think Silux is Samus' brother? Do you think he's actually a villain or is he a good guy? What are his motives, his intentions? What could he possibly do with the Metroid? Um, why is he stalking Samus? And what exactly is the relationship he has with Samus? Let me know all your theories and speculation in the comment section below. And if you're new to the channel, I do tons of other Metroid videos um, on news about the new games or rumors and different discussions. I also talk about other Nintendo games and movie news as well. So if you're interested in any of that or you know anyone who might be interested, please share my videos around and um, consider subscribing. So yeah, with that all said, thank you all for watching and um, please subscribe. Nova Scorpius out.